Hello friends and welcome to part 5 of our Fast API tutorial. In this video we're going to quickly touch on uh, string validation in query parameters. So now if we look, this is our app which is running down here. Uh, here we have the Swagger documentation open right now. Um, let's, so this is the query parameter if we recall correctly, which we do, I do at least. Um, let's go in here, let's add another method or another route. We'll do app.get items. And we'll say this is async def just read items. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say this query is as we're used to string or none equals none. Uh, this time we're going to say results equals a let's set up a key value store items item ID foo item ID bar. Now we will say if Q results.update Q with Q and let's return Q. Okay. So just as a, a refresher, this string or none is the same thing as saying optional string. If we were to import optional from typing, if we imported typing.optional. We're not going to do that because I'm, again, I'm using uh, 3.10 for Python, but if you're using anything less than that, uh, then you'll want to use that optional, that optional parameter. So now what this does, if we go in here and we refresh the page, we see this and we're good. This is foobar. We get exactly what we think. Oh no, we want return results. Apologies. There we go. Now we get what we expected to get. Okay, perfect. We're good. Now, let's say we want to add some sort of validation, though. Let's say we want to set the limit of our query parameter to be, I don't know, say 10 characters. This is 6. Let's say we don't want foobar foobar to be a, an available query string. Well, there's no way we can really do that right here. But what we can do is we can import and we can use this query object that we get from fast api so we go into here from query and now if we look at this in pytorm i'm going to do control b and it's going to bring me to the declaration you can see the first parameters are default which is going to be any type and then we have all of these keyword arguments that we can pass in we're going to touch on some of those in, in just a little bit but here let's set our default to be none which is, this is the exact same thing as what we had just a few minutes ago. So this equals none is the exact same thing as this. But now what this will allow us to do is we can set something like max length equals 10. And now we have declared this and we get this error when we try, notice I didn't refresh the page. So this, this fast API app has um, has no real way, at least in the documentation here, of knowing if this is valid or not. I'm going to have to refresh the page, but what we see is on the back end, at the very least, we can see, ensure this value has at most 10 characters. Now let me refresh the page, try it out. We're going to do foobar foobar. And now fast API, the Swagger documentation, throws this error. If we go into here, and we run the, queer, the, the request with q equals foobar foobar, you can see we get that same error that we got before. This is, this is the more valuable thing. Ensure this value has at most 10 characters. I say it's the most valuable thing because if we're building a client-side application, this is just not returning anything. This doesn't give us any information. It's helpful from a, you know, a documentation standpoint on the back end, but if you're building a client-side application, you need to be able to read, you know, this sort of error documentation. Okay, uh, let's add in another one. Let's add in a min length. Min length equals three. So now if we try and type fo, we can see ensure this value has at least three characters. Okay, again, we're gonna go into, and I'm sorry for the zooming in and zooming out. Um, it just, it it's because I'm using one browser window. Maybe I should use more than one. Now remember, 
we didn't refresh the page yet. So this should still at least send the request, but we're gonna get this error response that we expect. Now, if we refresh the page, the Swagger documentation here has updated. We have to hit try it out again. We type in FO and now we get that, that um, behavior that we anticipate. Uh, let's see, there are, there are some other things we can do. We can add in regular expressions, which I am absolutely terrible with, but let's assume that we wanna have some sort of fixed query. I don't know why you would wanna do this. I can't think of a reason. I'm sure it's there's a, a, a valid reason. Maybe it's the sort of thing where you wanna, it's almost like a query, param, a query string version of a path parameter, if you will. Um, but what this is saying is, this is the only thing that will be allowed as our query the word fix query. Let's go in here and refresh the page and let's try this out. So first things first, we can set it to none and we're good. But if we try and set this to anything, so this is at least three characters, it's at least 10, it's less than 10 characters, but the regular expression does not match the words fixed query, fixed query. This will now work, but if it's anything other than that, it will not work because it doesn't match exactly this. There are other, you know, you if you want it to be a date and you don't want to use the built-in date format or you want it to be, you know, formatted a certain way, there are ways that you can use regular expressions um, in here. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I mean, I'm terrible at it. I don't see myself ever using it, but it is, it is an option. Um, what we can also do, if we get rid of this, um, we can set a default value. So let's say we want the default to be something like fixed query. And let's get rid of this none because we're declaring a default value, a non-null default value. So if we don't pass anything in, if we go into here and we don't pass in any query, um, you can see we're gonna get the query result of fixed query. We get that back. We can pass anything else Q equals hello, and we're gonna get hello. But if we don't pass in any sort of query whatsoever, we get back this default parameter. I mean, it's a, it's a Python default parameter. It's exactly what we anticipate. Okay, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna include a required query string. So this has a default parameter. So, I mean, it, this isn't required, but it is. Um, this is a way we can, we can set something. So let's go into here and make this none. And let's set this string or none equals that. So this is an optional parameter as we're gonna see. Okay, if we don't pass anything in, nothing happens, we're good. But as soon as we get rid of all of this, we execute. We're gonna notice the error saying field required. Let's refresh our page. And now we can see here, this is a required query parameter. We have to pass something in. If we don't pass anything in here, we're gonna get this field required error again. So this is good. If you wanna have a required query string, this is how you do it. But how do you, how do, you do it without having a default? So we wanna have a min length equals three max length equals 10, but we don't want this to be none. We don't want this to be fixed query because this is, again, it's, it's not requiring it. It's by default setting it to something else. Well, the way you can get around this is by using these ellipses here. So this will, um, this will allow us to say, this is required. We don't have a default value, but it has to be something. Now, if we go back in here and we refresh our page, we can see again, this is a required query, but now we're able to actually include some validation on it. Okay, so that's how you would add in a required parameter with that, that validation. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out for now. We're gonna say none, uh, string or none. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to add in uh, the possibility of multiple values, okay? So instead of just a string here, let's say we wanna pass in 
items q equals a and q equals b and q equals c and q equals d. Well, this is just going to return q equals d because it's assuming it's one thing. It's going to read through all of these and it's going to get, oh, hey, q equals d. But if we want to allow for multiple options, it's very, very simple to do. All you need to do is say that this is going to be a list of strings. That's it. What this will do is this will tell Fast API that we're going to, that we could be passing in multiple parameters. We don't have to pass anything in because again, this is no, it's or none. But now if we refresh this page, we can see we get Q is now A, B, C, and D. Okay, so you can pass that in as as a list by adding in as many of those query parameters as you need as long as you're declaring this list. Um, similarly to how we saw before, we can do, we can set a default parameter for this. Um, instead of it being just a string though, this would be, for example, foo and bar. And now if we go back in here and we get rid of that and we hit enter, you can see our query by default is gonna be foo and bar, okay? Let's take a look to see what it looks like in the Swagger documentation, just so you can kind of get an idea. So you can see here we've got these string items. We can get rid of these. We add a string item, string, string one, string two. Oh, I thought I was being so clever. String three, and so on and so forth. We hit execute, and we get all of these values for our, our query strings. Okay. Um, we can add in... Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's touch on adding in metadata. Let's do that. So we're gonna go back to our good old string or none. It's a query of none. Let's say min length equals three, max length equals 10. Now let's add in a title. Title equals sample query string. Let's hit save, just so it reformats a little bit. Um, let's take a look. Let's see what else we want to add. Let's add in a description. Um, description equals, this is a sample query string. Uh, let's refresh the page and see what happens. You can see here we have, this is a sample query string. If we go down into our schema here, no, it's not there. I forget where it's supposed to be, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so here we have our description. Um, if we want to add in, let's see, we can make it deprecated if we want to. Deprecated equals true. And we refresh our page here. You can see here, it gives us the warning that it's deprecated, but it still allows it to show up in case you're using an older version or something like that. Uh, I don't want to leave that there. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What else do we want to add in? Um, let's say we want to, we want to call some, we want to call it something besides Q. Let's say we want to call it item query. Well, this is not going to work. So you notice how a lot of times like a slug field, for example, in a, um, in a blog, will have, um, you know, something like items, um, title equals hello world, something like that. Forgot the D. Um, well, so we can actually say post title equals hello world. So this is a valid URL parameter, but Python doesn't like this. Um, Python can't handle a, a minus character. You know, it's a snake cased language. Um, so we're going to leave this as a queue, just as a, as a point here. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to say alias equals, and then let's call it um, item query. So now what will happen if we go into here, this is a sample query string. Item query is this value right here. Okay, that's all fine and good, but let's take a look to see what happens. So now if we type in Q equals foobar, we don't get anything. And that's because this is no longer Q. 
Sure, it's declared as Q here, but for the purpose of the URL itself, this is now no longer Q. What we end up doing now is we say item query equals foobar, and now it shows up. Okay, so that, that alias here allows you to replace that single variable with something that's a little more, I don't want to say modern, but you get the idea. Um, one last thing, let's, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, what do we want to touch on? Let's see about hiding something. So let's do, uh, let's leave this as Q, we'll get rid of our results. Oh, you know what, I'll do, I'm going to make this a separate one, app.get items hidden, because this is hidden query. So we're going to declare this as hidden query is a string or none equals query none. But now we're going to say include in schema equals false. So now if hidden query, then return hidden query, hidden query. Otherwise return hidden query is not found. Okay, now let's go back into here. Refresh our page. We don't need read items right now. We're gonna look at items hidden query. So now you notice there is no actual parameter that shows up here. We can hit try it out and we hit execute. And we get sample query param. Uh, what am I missing here? What am I missing? Oh, duh. Hidden query route. Sorry, I was, so what was going on? <laughs> This is actually kind of stupid. Um, so I was actually naming um, my my method here the same thing as my parameter. So that was uh, kind of a, a dumb thing to do. Okay, so now let's try again. We go in here, execute, and this is still not working. Field is required. I'm missing something. Okay, I found it. What I am missing is I actually have items slash item ID up here. I have it up here somewhere. So this is assuming that I'm pa I should be passing in a sample query param, and I should not. So we're just going to say items underscore hidden is what we'll call it. I'll refresh this page. Let's try it one last time. Execute. Hidden query is not found. If I do items underscore hidden and I do hidden query is foobar, we get the actual hidden query. Okay, that was a lot. And this tells you you should organize your methods and routes a bit better so that that sort of thing doesn't happen. Um, okay, I think that's it for now. It's a long video already. Um, in the next in the next tutorial, we are going to talk about numeric validation in path parameters. Very, very similar concept, but let's say we want this is going to be some sort of integer or float, and we want to, you know, validate that value, you know, greater than, less than, that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, so until next time, I will see you later.